and I started out of college here at night. I went and interviewed with the CFO, got a job. I was the purchasing manager, and um, which meant uh, I didn't get to buy trucks. I didn't buy fuel. I didn't buy anything of any consequence, <laughs> but I bought uh, office supplies. I made sure the bathrooms had plenty of soap and toilet paper. Uh, you know, the real important stuff. <laughs> and uh, I had an, had an experience once where I ran into Kevin Knight uh, standing in the bathroom, and he, he told me, he says, gosh, you know, this industry is very competitive, and we have to have the lowest cost per mile. And, and he said, cost is so critical given the competitiveness of the industry. And so he gave me this huge pep talk about doing everything I possibly could to be on top of our costs so we could maximize our efficiencies. And so uh, that was an unbelievable experience. I remember that I came back and just looked for any and every way we could become a little bit more efficient, have a little less waste. And so um, so I did that, and then that grew into some other opportunities and owner-operators, and then I became... uh, Somewhere along the way, I had a finance degree. Somewhere along the way, Kevin asked if I had much accounting, and I said, yeah, some, but probably not enough. And then I, and on his uh, encouragement that I would, to get more accounting, I went back to basically graduate school and uh, did a year and a half. While I was working full-time, year and a half of, of uh, work to get enough credits to be able to sit for the CPA exam. So, And then in 2004 long time ago. I was 28 years old. I became the CFO of the company. And then uh, it just kind of grown from there. Didn't you have other dreams before you got into trucking? Share with the people, what did you really want to do before you got so, in? So uh, yeah, be, before I went to Argentina, I was convinced I was I wanted to be an orthopedic surgeon. And I would go to the hospital. I was part of a group. We would tour. We would have exposure with doctors. And I was trying to do everything I could to prepare in high school for a college career. And then it just changed. It changed while I was uh, doing service in Argentina. And I, and I just decided I wasn't ready to put everything in life on hold that long. And I wanted to go put my heart and soul into business and make a difference. And, uh, and I think being down, down in South America, I just recognized, recognized what a positive influence business can be for, for economies, for families, for individuals, and uh, and so so I decided I wanted to do that. And then so in college, I go in the finance angle. I thought, well, maybe I'll become an investment banker. And and I knew uh, I, I I knew my dad knew Keith Knight, who had li- was living in California at the time, who was one of the four founders. And so I kind of had this connection. I felt a little bit. So I would do a lot of my finance projects on night transportation and and on swift transportation. Oh. And so, oddly enough, I still have to this day uh, a report I did doing comparisons of Knight and Swift uh, in 2000, 99 and 2000. And uh, it's funny to look back and see what the revenues were then for both businesses. And so today to to be just uh, in a small way involved with everything both those companies do is uh, is kind of exciting. So um, That's so cool. So I'd say, though, after about a year and a half in, I made this personal commitment where I, I said, okay, I'm not going to go follow what the professors told me, which was constantly be auctioning, your, auctioning yourself off to the highest bidder. I said, I am going to put my heart and soul into learning everything I can about this business, regardless of whether or not it has anything to do with the job title I have today. I'll be valuable to this company if I can understand every area and I can just take this curiosity and be intentional about it and learn as much as I can. And so I began to get my hands on industry-related articles, anything analysts would publish about our company, I would try and get my hands on. And, and it just I just came deeper and deeper in love with the, with the challenge and concept of, of uh, transportation, truckload transportation, and particularly the mission and purpose of our company. And, uh, and it is, it's just been absolutely fulfilling and satisfying uh, to, be, to be involved. Work is never done, can never do good enough, uh, can, can, can never have enough influence or reach. Uh, but boy, oh boy, is it a pleasure to work close with great people who care, who want to try and do it the right way and do the right things. And so that's 
more than you wanted to know about me. So I know you said you um, took the CFO position at 28. That's really young Yeah. for that big of a position. Yeah. I mean, that's a huge position, especially at your age. Yeah. Um, challenges? Did you have any challenges? What were your... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a little tough. I mean, I was... Uh, number one, I, I, it's not a huge vote of confidence when you're, my pay was, I think, $66,000 for that executive, big time executive job <laughs> that told me they don't want to overpay me and lose me when this doesn't work out. They want to keep me and have me do something else because I'm probably good at, you know, cleaning floors and stuff. So definitely ordering toilet paper, right? <laughs> like, like nobody's business. Yeah. Who knew that that would become someday such a All right. important function, but, um, so, uh, it, when, when I first started the audit firm that we had, they, uh, they weren't involved in the process enough or, or had whatever their reasons were, and they resigned and they, they, they quit the, and, uh, gave us notice. And when you're a public company, I had four business days to tell the public that we didn't have, we weren't going to have our audit partner. Mm-hmm. So I had to work really quick to get another one of the big four audit firms on board before they knew that I didn't have one or we would have paid a lot more money for them. <laughs> and so sure enough, they were more than eager to jump in. That was Deloitte. Deloitte came in and saved the day. I'm not going to say who left, but, um, but Deloitte came in, saved the day and, uh, and off and off we went. So I, you know, there was adversity and almost everything I did for the first while was doing it for the first time. And uh, the, the, the reality though is Kevin Knight is such a powerful teacher and mentor and has such vision. And he, uh, he just, he never gave up on me still, still hasn't yet. And, uh, and I just tried to keep up and I just saw how, how that passion to just always want to get better, never, never be settled with where you are and believe in people, but do the homework and, uh, and, and do the right thing time and time again, just how powerful and fulfilling that is. And so uh, so I was just soaking it all in. And Kevin's done that with a handful of us. With, I mean, he's been preparing the next generation, if you will, for, for 15 years. Right. And, um, and that's a lot of work. I mean, and we haven't worn him out totally yet. <laughs> but uh, but, that's, but that's, that's huge because, you know, really, if you look at success, if you were to try and put a definition on what is success – uh, it sure seems like it's a combination of the results that you get and the development of the people that happens while you're getting those results. And so if you can be developing people, and the way you define development of people is rather broad as well, and you can get results, which means you're achieving your goals and what you set out to do, that feels <laughs> like success. And there's... And if you go too hard in one way at the expense of the other, then it's hard to call that success. And right. so, um, so acknowledging that, being part of a culture, a business that that believes and understands that uh, at the top, which was the founders of the of the business, um, is uh, is really powerful. So. Thank you for watching that clip. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more clips like that, please click here. Or if you'd like to check out a full episode. Click here. And don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube.